Hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Council of Elrond. On this week's episode, myself and Johnny, the Melonheads, are joined by someone who also shares our passion and our enthusiasm for all things Lord of the Rings, our dear friend Lauren. This Texan cowgirl will be given her own perspective and take on the emotional weight of the trilogy, but don't worry, she'll also be answering some fun questions too. So strap in, and let's get to it! Cowgirls don't cry! Cowgirl? Oh man, that's <laughs> So Lauren, you glad to be here? I'm so glad. It's so fun to see you guys again. I've been listening to you for weeks, but now I get to look at your faces, which is better. Ah, ah, it's That's nice to nice. see you. Yeah, Thanks. we've 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 roped this cowgirl into this episode. Yeah, yeah, hey, finally. There's gonna be a lot of uh, Texas puns in this episode. I can't wait. <laughs> oh man, that's I should have been writing down some Texas puns. What? That's all I was doing all week. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I got. <laughs> It's good. Fine. It's good. Lauren, why don't you well tell us a little bit about yourself and where you come from, what you do, and yeah. Totally. I um, My name's Lauren. I live in Dallas, Texas, but for a year I lived in Galway, Ireland, which is where I met Johnny and Dave. And um, we had so much fun. And I remember one of my, actually my very first memory of being in y'all's house was Dave. I think you were just a young pup of 17 at the time. And we, I was sitting at the kitchen table and we started talking about Lord of the Rings and I pulled up that Sporkle quiz Naturally. thing. Yes. Aww. And we spent hours doing Lord of the Rings yes. Sporkle quizzes. And I remember... What was it? Was it just naming characters or yeah. something like that? Some hard like a, quiz on, quizzes on Sporkle. To- yeah, yeah, they are hard. Like, And it was timed yeah. and you just had to fill out as much as you could and spelling counted, yeah. which was my weak, weak spot. But... um. Yeah, it's my first memory of you, Dave, because I had met most of the other Clarks before at just like around town and stuff. But that was my first memory mm. of Dave was Lord of the Rings. Oh, cool. That yeah. young pup Man, I got... who actually liked Lord of the Rings. So you're like, oh, he's not that yeah. bad. Yeah, I was like, oh, Dave's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. I'm glad you've brought that up saying like the first time I met you, you instantly started talking about Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I'm like, am I that much of a nerd? Okay. Well. You were kind of like um, shy at that moment because you didn't know me yet. I was territorial. And I was just like, how can I uncrack this hard candy shell? And it was with Lord of the Rings. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so that's how I met you guys is my year in Galway. And now I actually live in Dallas um, selling chocolate for a chocolate company. So, you know. Ooh, Full circle. Yes, so Delicious. we've got our we've got our very own Willy Wonka uh, yeah. on this episode. Mm. So we're we're expecting some chocolate in the post. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. <laughs> I really do want to send y'all oh. chocolate. It's just too hot right now. Look for it at Christmas. <laughs> yeah, we'll just Sweet. be getting like squishy packages <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> arriving in five years' time. Exactly. Fresh. So if you have listened to our episode named Middle Earth Favorites you would have heard myself and Johnny's favorite aspects on Lord of the Rings. But today we're going to quiz Lauren on some of her favorites and see what things she likes about Lord of the Rings. So first of all, Lauren, I just want to ask you, what would be your favorite scene in Lord of the Rings? My favorite scene? um, I was honestly shocked when I listened to y'all's answers that this wasn't one of them because I feel so passionately about it for me. My favorite scene is when the Ents destroy Isengard and just oh, like oh, just so wreak havoc and it's just mayhem and you just see little orc bodies flying everywhere and it's just it sounds very morbid <laughs> that I love that so oh, much. Oh man. <laughs> that, it's so wait, great. That's the part you like when they're actually in Isengard or is it like the march to... Uh, oh, right, yeah, okay, I like cool. that. Because <laughs> yeah, the music exactly. before they arrive in is just epic. <laughs> that's great too, but... I love when the dam breaks and then the... the oh, when the, the, it, when, the, when, the, when the tree that's on fire eventually gets to quench. It's like yes. such a relief. Yeah. Like that, so meme, that meme of like Robert Downey Jr. doing that whole like, oh my God, what a relief thing. And it's like when the edge that's on fire eventually gets to like quench his flames. It's like... Yes. Oh, you're just like, God. oh yes. no, we can't lose even one. And then you're like, oh, yeah. he's fine. He's good. He's fine. Yeah, he's fine. that's <laughs> so <laughs> true. That's so good. I love that scene. I will say it was hard for me to choose just one. I will, that was like the front runner, but then there was like, 
you know, gold medal goes to that one. Silver mm. would be... Oh, is that a podium um, situation? Nice one. We okay. do. But I made up my own rules here because I could not No, that's good. Choose. That's good. That's good. Dave, Dave and I have... Well, al- at least somebody did. Dave and I have <laughs> I've already given our answers. So uh, we're only... Be mm. good. It's, it's nice to get more than one answer from you. For, uh, do you yeah. have... Have you got like multiple for each of this, each of the criteria? Yeah. I mean, okay. not every single one, but... <laughs> Strap yourselves in. It's going to be a long podcast. I don't know. <laughs> we're going to be here for a while, guys. I figured since I was the only one sharing... I was allowed at least two because like, oh, it wasn't okay. a back and forth, you know? That's so, a good thought. Yeah. Well, I've changed all my answers. Now. <laughs> exactly. They change every week. They kind they of really do. do. They really do. Yeah. Depending on the one that pops into your head, you know? Yeah, like, I feel like Lauren's answer is my answer now, too. Because <laughs> I'm like, that is the best scene. I know, it's, it's so good. Um, so I would say my second favorite scene is when uh, Theoden transforms. He goes from being, like, uh, you know, raggedy and possessed and terrifying and gross to like young and viral and you're just like oh such relief he's just suddenly yeah. handsome and like strong again i love that exactly scene. and a- 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 awen's face when she sees the change as well and she's just so like there's my uncle he's back yeah and, uh, oh yeah, and you just beautiful. like feel this like oh good has won in this situation we're good mm, so. you just feel like i know your face yes yeah oh, i love that that was that's my other favorite scene it's just so it's like, really well made as well Mm-hmm. it is even 20 years ago exactly mm-hmm. whenever i'm watching that i'm always like my, I, you know it's I, I start to like stare at the screen i'm like right i really want to see the exact moment i want to catch the, it out where it's where it's changing and it's just i mean you can kind of catch it at bits but it's like it's still done so so well that uh, yeah yeah i don't know i do it's the same thing i'm just like where am yeah. i gonna find like the you know yeah where's the, the, the edits whole, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so good love it mm. funnily enough one time when myself and johnny were in spain I don't know. Do you remember this, Johnny? When we were sitting at the beach and then we saw this old woman, quite quite a... I do remember this, of course. Quite a heavy woman indeed. And I don't mean to like offend her at all, but like she's not listening, I assume. But she was there trying to set up her umbrella to sit out in the sun. And we were, for, I don't know why it popped into our heads, but we were like... We should play the end music, like the last march of the ends while she's doing this. And oh then I recorded it on Snapchat. And it was just so funny because it, it was so slow. She was, slow like, she was, she was, she was yeah, she was moving her umbrella it. around. It was just such slow movements. And you had the, 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 the music of the last march of the ends in the background. <laughs> I used to watch that video over and over and just like piss myself <laughs> laughing. It was so funny. Oh, it, was, it was good stuff. It was yeah. good stuff. Oh, Quality man. content. thing that we want to ask you for your favorite is what was your favorite score your favorite howard shore score or piece of music in general uh this one was also very easy it's the shire i'm not sure if that's actually what it's called but that's the one i i put on youtube and was kind of just going through scores just to make sure i remembered which one was which and it's for sure mm. the shire um yeah just hearing that concerning hobbits i think yeah it's con- it's called concerning hobbits I think so. Yeah, but it's also just called like the music of the Shire. Like, mm. yeah, go onto yeah. YouTube and find like eight-hour versions of the music of the Shire, and it's just like repeating yeah. that. That yeah. like, but yeah, that little kind of theme is. I think it's yeah, David's right concerning Hobbits, but it's so good. And there's the two, you know, like the that one, and then also the that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like, I feel just so like. How do they make you feel? Ah, just light and I don't know, like. If nothing bad's happened yet. I feel, I feel like I feel like a hobbit when I hear that music. I feel mm-hmm. like I'm there in the Shire, and my only concern is where am I going to get a piece of cake? Yeah. And <laughs> my only concern is hobbits because that's the name of the song. Exactly. <laughs> no, yeah, that does make me. I just feel so. It's just I feel jolly and light and just like, you know, like nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing bad happens here when this song is playing. So, but I, like, I, I, I think I think yeah. like you've just said those two pieces of music that like. Da, 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 da. that's like really like you know calm and i want i'm sitting Relaxing. under a tree reading a book and it's suddenly the da, 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 da. It, that's so much more joyful and mm-hmm. like uplifting and mischievous happy and, and mischievous as well yeah. Also. Yeah, yeah so yeah a little mischievous it's like yeah it really encapsulates the i don't know the life of the hobbit so well in that like very short little piece of music so fantastic choice Lauren, I want 
wanted to ask who in the Lord of the Rings would be your favorite leader if you had to pick one person to lead who would that be okay this one was also uh, just a single answer because it felt so uh, just the one I like is uh, Aragorn he is he's just hot. my favorite he's hot <laughs> he <laughs> he looks good with wet hair I mean I don't want anything else um no he's He's just very selfless. You never once see him do something that's for his good and only his good. It's always for the the greater good of the group, which I think is what a leader is. And he just had his ego is so non-existent, which is mm. shocking in a leader. Um, and I know like mm-hmm. I love uh, Boromir, but like his ego just kind of takes like he's almost too human for me to like Mm, choose him as my favorite leader because even though it is like he's human so there's something very real in him but aragorn is just kind of uh he's just yeah i think i like baromir because of his ego i I like i like Mm. egotistical people i think (laughs) they're they're very they're both great leaders but it's kind of whichever you prefer like Mm. who would you prefer to be led by if you if you're going into battle i feel like i'd like baromir leading me into battle but if you're going into I don't know. A swimming, a swimming pool. <laughs> I didn't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like Aragorn is, he's just so steady and he's so, um, yeah. like he's got the long-term goal in mind. So it's kind of like, yes. I want him to help me like build this thing that's going to take years. <laughs> yeah. But like for those steady like bursts of, you know, he's maybe not the best guy, but. No, but long-term. like, yeah, like, like, like you said, like a long-term, he becomes the king of Gondor and he rules like, and he you know, he rules over a huge peaceful period of time for like a long, 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 long period of time. And mm. that's who you want at the, like at the helm of your... It's like Joe Biden. You know, uh, <laughs> leading the people in peace. <laughs> yeah, least. but like, you know, he's steady and sound and, you know, young. <laughs> He'll do. Oh gosh. Looks good wet. Isn't Looks good with wet hair. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know oh what? I found out. I found out not that long ago that uh, Vigo Mortensen lives in the same city as me. And uh, just yesterday, I was speaking to my girlfriend, and she said that she was uh, talking to some of her colleagues at work. And one of her colleagues said that um, she used to see Vigo pretty much every morning when she was going down to like uh, walk her dog. She said she'd go down, and he lived in the same neighborhood, so she'd walk her dog in the morning, and Vigo was there walking his dog as well. And she said they'd always cross paths. And then she said another Brago. colleague. So, yeah, the dog Brago. Uh, so she li- she works in a small office with about like eight people. And she said one colleague said that. And another colleague said, oh, yeah, I, I used to see him all the time in this museum where every time they had a new exhibition, Vigo was always there. So she was like, basically, if you want to see Vigo, just whenever there's a new exhibition in this museum, go there and you'll see him. Oh, wow. Like, Oh Good my know. god! Oh. <laughs> Good to know. I will that, be there. That's my new mission. So I'm going to be like <laughs> on Vigo Vigo hunt from now on. So that's sure, we awesome. can talk to him next week when he'll be a guest on our podcast. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get ready for that one, folks. Next week, Vigo. I can't wait. I'll be on then too. <laughs> yeah. Disclaimer: He won't actually be here. <laughs> <laughs> this is a dream. Very good. So the next favor that we want to ask you, Lauren, is which actor do you think gave the best performance in the Lord of the Rings trilogy? Um, my answer is Andy Serkis. I just, even though I struggled, I actually ran this by my roommate to be like, can I count him as the best actor? Because it was a very different type of performance. And she just was like, of course you can. Don't even question yeah. it. And I was like, okay, calm oh, down. Yeah. But like, he, he, <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh my God. <laughs> so I was like, I'm sorry. Relax. Um, <laughs> I just, I love. Yeah, um, we don't live together anymore because of this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually really appreciated her like putting her foot down. Like, no, he did an amazing performance. You choose him. I was like, yes, I will. Thank you. <laughs> um, side note, I have a confession. I thought for the longest time, his last name was spelled circus, like circus. Like, like going to the circus. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, and so when I saw that, I laughed out loud because I was like, "Oh my gosh, I never knew." Andy, um, the circus clown. Yes, yeah. and I was like, "It kind of fits," you know. What's your favorite scene that he performs in? So, if I'm going to go deeper into it, yeah, I think the scene where oh, it's so heartbreaking, but um, 
when he's at the pool and I don't know the right words for everything, but when he, you can tell he's betrayed by Frodo and like he feels so hurt and there's just some, I think what I love most about him is I don't think there's any character that makes you feel such a spectrum than Gollum because he's like, Mm, you have pity, you hate him, you love him weirdly, maybe not love, but you have affection for him. And he makes you mm. so angry, and like, yeah, oh, the way he treats Sam. Yeah, that's really good. Oh. It's really, it's, it's that's that's a really good point. The way that really your emotions answer. towards him change so dramatically over a short period of time, and like you mm-hmm. said, for example, in the Two Towers, that scene where he catches the brace of conies and he brings them over, and it's just like short period of time when you're kind of going, you're starting to be like, oh, he's like adorable. He's this little pet. He's like so happy that he's helping the ma- his master. And, yeah, and then like. Yeah. yeah, then he's he's in the forbidden pool and he's like and you know Frodo you know he's he's living his best life in that pool he's loving it and Frodo's like come on and he's like oh do I have to go now and he's so obedient he's like okay I don't know why but I'm going to do whatever my master tells me and then immediately mm-hmm. he's like gets caught and he's like he's betrayed master I know um, and he trusts Frodo and you can tell he's yeah, grown yeah. to trust him and then mm. though it's for his own good you know he doesn't quite have the capacity to understand that at that point yes. you know Ugh. But no, that trust that you're speaking about, exactly. That's why I'm saying he, like, that's his absolute favorite place to be in the world, that pool. And he doesn't really question. He kind of, like, just says, oh, do we really have to go now? And he's like, okay, I trust you completely. Mm-hmm. And that's why the betrayal or what he feels is a betrayal is so much more, I don't know, profound. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, that's a great answer. Oh, thanks. He's just, I, there's, I still, I struggle. I have such conflicting feelings about Gollum, even though I've seen the trilogy, you know, I don't know how many times. But... Depending well, he's on the such movie. a conflicting character. Yes, he is. And you just... It, oh. So yeah, that's my answer. And again, to go back to what I was saying before about our favorite episode, David, you said for your favorite piece of music was Smeagol's song, or Gollum's song, I should say. Mm-hmm. And I think we spoke about how the music in that song, like we said, the music of The Hobbit, uh, of The Shire, it just encapsulated the the emotions and the characters of the, the Shire folk. Gollum's song just completely encapsulates who Gollum was and also we said that the whole song you're feeling these weird contrasting emotions and it's like it's unnerving it makes you uncomfortable you're you're on edge all the time mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's like a nervous feeling when you're listening to that song and uh, so so many things were were done so brilliantly in terms of the music and then also as you said the the performance of Andy Serkis so uh, yeah really good Andy Serkis's performance just the fact that he's able to play two different characters in the one is incredible and they really show that in that scene where it's literally Gollum and then the camera pans over and it's Smeagol and then they keep doing that switch in camera angle yeah uh, I think that was actually directed by Philip O'Boyens as well hmm. it or was Philip O'Boyens no it was, it was directed by Fran Walsh that scene oh, Fran Walsh sorry yeah all these women with the F's and P's <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like that was a really uh, yeah, like a actually, really, really good scene. I, mm-hmm. Peter Jackson said that that was one of the final scenes that they shot, and it was. It wasn't that it was. Uh, they had that in their schedule to shoot it at the end. They said that they just kind of came up with that and shot it like as a final idea. That they were saying we don't have a scene that really sh- that really explains the character of Smeagol and Gollum to the audience. And Fran Walsh actually came up with that idea. Just like suddenly, she was like, "What if we show him as like two split split ideas or two split two yeah. split personalities?" And Peter Jackson was like, oh, that's great. Uh, I'm busy. Can you just go and shoot that now in the next couple of hours? And she just took like a really, he said she took like a really minimal crew. Like, for example, when they were shooting that scene, you can see Frodo and Sam asleep in the background. And so he was like, we just had two stuffed dummies in the background. And it was just like a minimal set where it was just Andy Serkis and like a very small crew. And they shot that in a couple of hours. And they were like, right, that's it. And now it's one of the like most important scenes of understanding who uh, Gollum and Smeagol are. So, it really is, yeah. Yeah, that's really impressive, that scene. It's oh, mm-hmm. it's so good. I think um, I, I love how you guys are so musically minded because I'm not really. I mean, honestly, I mean, I just kind of like, I like float in the river and just get taken by music. I don't really like think about what's happening. <laughs> I just kind of like yeah. play dead and just absorb it. But you guys, <laughs> I think you guys, cool. you come from such like a musical family. So I know that you, music is kind of in your natural like, language of life and so i think you guys have helped me pay more attention to music and like i would have never even thought about the way the music of Gollum makes me then see Gollum. you know like the Mm. the eeriness so i i love getting y'all's perspective on that because it's 
my family is not musical at all, so I don't have anything <laughs> like that. I think you sang beautifully earlier when you were singing this, this song from the Shire, so you did really well. I was so nervous about that, even just that <laughs> tiny Great auto tune. <laughs> Right, these guys are going to judge me immediately. I know. They're like taking notes like, no, no, no. <laughs> no. Slightly off pitch there, Lauren. I hate to break it to you. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I love getting those perspective. It's it's eye-opening for me. So thanks, guys. Oh, well, oh, thank well. you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That was a lovely compliment. Mm, you're welcome. So the next favorite we have, when, when myself and Johnny Achi had this in our episode, we both had a different kind of idea of what it was. Uh, it's favorite camera shot so I kind of thought of it as one still kind of screenshot frame Johnny was more I think what was your favorite one Johnny but it was kind of what was your favorite camera shot I believe my favorite uh, I'm trying to remember I uh, I believe my favorite camera shot was was it the sequence of the the lighting of the beacons Mm -hmm. yeah so that was more yeah it's it's a shot as well where it's showing the whole thing so two different things yeah, like mine was a video shot and yours was like a still yeah. shot. Was it? Mm. Anyways. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Lauren, what would be your favorite camera shot? I have two answers for this again. Um, my first favorite <laughs> is when... We're getting the we're getting the Smeagol and the Gollum answers from all of, for all of <laughs> Gollum's... It's for true. All of Lauren's answers. My multiple personalities. Each one has a favorite. <laughs> um <laughs> So I really liked the scene right after the ring's destroyed and Frodo and Sam are kind of perched on that rock and the lava is just like flowing all around them. Um, Mm. And then you kind of just barely see the eagles come in. Um, I really like that shot. It's just... That is beautiful. It's so... Slow motion as well. Yes, yes. And um, you just feel a lot. You feel like relief, also like pain and sadness because you're like, they're going to die here. You know, like they've done all that work and here they are just trapped. And then you just see like the shadow coming. So I really like that scene. That's really cool. Or that camera shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. Um, My other one is when Lord Denethor uh, falls off the end of (laughs) 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 Minas And like you just kind of, you're panned back and you just see this little fiery thing like. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. and he falls out. You're like, what an epic way to go. Like I know. I'm like. Yeah, I love the way they use that shot to like show the glory of Minas Tirith, but it's really someone burning and jumping off a cliff. I don't know why I love it so much. And I also think every time like, what man burning alive could run that far? And I think, well, that might be a little uh, something I would change if I was to change something because I think he would have given out long before that like yeah, 100 yard I, dash. I think there's a picture showing like the side angle of Minas Tirith and it says, wow, Denethor had to really run a long way because he starts from like the mountains behind Minas Tirith <laughs> and then there's like a bridge to the back of Minas Tirith that has to go through like the whole top level. And it's like a 20 minute run. <laughs> Yeah. You just picture him like waiting to like cross the crosswalk like on fire. He's like, okay, come on, guys, right, yeah. come on, I'm gonna keep Man, running. That guy's on fire. Yeah. <laughs> waiting for the traffic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'm not like I'm burning here or anything. Uh, so, yeah, I like those two. Both involve fire and heat, so I don't know. I'm morbid oh, yeah. love of fire. Like a pyromaniac over there. Just a bit. That's fine. <laughs> just a bit. <laughs> um. Cool. Very, very good. So the next one that we want to ask you, Lauren, is about your favorite kill. What's your favorite kill from Lord of the Rings? So this one was um, hard for me because a lot of the parts I like the most about like overcoming like the bad guy, they don't actually get killed. You know, like in a scene where it's like when what's the spider's name? I forgot her name. Shelob. Shelob. Yeah. Like I was like, I want Shelob to die, but she doesn't die. So I can't choose that. Um, So my <laughs> favorite is at the a lot of my favorites are from the two towers, but um, at the beginning of the Battle of Helm's Deep, when um, you know all the orcs are lined up and all of the men are mm. on the wall, and there's like this quiet, like it, like the battle's about to begin, but it hasn't begun, and then that archer lets his arrow loose. The old it, guy, yeah, the old guy, and it kills the orc like prematurely, yeah, and then suddenly so there's good. like this roar of anger from the orcs, and you can like feel the men way more scared than they were like two seconds ago yeah the tension yes yeah. so that's, that's my amazing. favorite kill because it's like you just suddenly i'm like oh my gosh now i'm really scared before i was like yeah these yeah. works are freaky 
but now they're pissed and freaky. Yeah, and there was that kind of silence just at that moment as well, yeah. Yes, yes. And there's that kind of thought like, will this battle actually go ahead or will we just keep roaring at each other and then that guy <laughs> uh, kills him and it's like, ah, well, here we it's go. It's on, yeah. <laughs> We've spoken about that kill on this podcast before as well. I, mm-hmm. I, I love that kill as well. I always think it's like, what an amazing shot as well because like, yeah. That's like just after Legolas had said like, oh, their armor is weak at the neck and under the arm. And he gets mm. him right in the neck. And it's like, uh, but I've also said as well before, I think that uh, I, I always have this idea or this like uh, kind of thought how it would have been so funny if his arrow just dropped short. And it just, he like accidentally like loosed his arrow and it just dropped like a meter short and didn't hit anybody. <laughs> and, and the regard just like, what the hell is that guy doing? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was an awesome shot and a great kill yeah i yeah. love it. it it just do you have another so, one i do i have another um oh yeah um aon killing the witch king that's you know uh, yeah. Yeah. gotta I love aon yeah. ah standard she's the there's best no there's no need to explain that to in, in too much detail because it's very yeah. satisfying yeah, yeah it's again a- awesome explosion where it's like he kind of looks like collapses in and mm-hmm. um, yeah yeah mm. oh it's epic especially we can get more into the the female perspective, but as a female, you're just like, yes, finally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think uh, I, th- I think when myself and Johnny went for our favorite kills, we kind of went for more kind of uh, kind of cool kills. Like I remember mine was the guy that got uh, Amir threw a spear at him on a Muma kill, and he like went flying and a kill. Do you know it was kind of like mm-hmm. cool? But I like the way you chose your kill, as in kind of the way it affected everyone around and like how it made everyone nervous mm-hmm. and angry and I don't, I don't know it was probably a more important kill than the kind of freaky ones that we mentioned before <laughs> that's okay we, we all have different favorites but yeah I, I do, <laughs> it, it did change the the don't patronize the me. atmosphere <laughs> it's okay dave <laughs> little dave yeah, little puppy dave <laughs> little pup <laughs> little poopy i am no man Did you want to give the female perspective on that scene? Because it's pretty cool that they give her like a female character in Northern Rings such a important kill and against mm-hmm. a, a, a kill of a person who is feared by even Gandalf, like the most powerful good character that we see. And he's, mm-hmm. uh, well, he's fearful of the Witch King and like he probably would have been stronger than the Witch King, but like he does fear him a little bit and he knows he's powerful. So to give that kill to a human woman is uh, massive and so mm-hmm. that's really cool so what's your perspective on that i i think i had to be older to appreciate it um like when i first saw it in middle school you know i i was like cool you know great and yeah, then like yeah. gone on about my way but i think especially <laughs> now knowing more about um uh tolkien which i don't i'm not an expert in tolkien i never like took a class on him or anything but uh, and just the time he wrote that um, makes it stand out all the more because mm-hmm. it is just very forward to let to let a woman have such a triumphant, like masculine quality of like dominating something is mm, yeah. very, very unusual. Even now, um, maybe not as much now, but especially when this was written, you know, and of course. so... There are very few women in the story, which I made a list of the women. We can get to that later. <laughs> but uh, Eowyn's character, I just think she's just the fact that she's so she's still feminine. She's still beautiful. She's still, um, you know, all these things women are supposed to be, quote unquote. But mm-hmm. yet she gets the like the she has the strength and she's showcased as having the strength and the desire to fight for what she loves and what she believes in and. And, and she's been trying to prove how she can fight all this time and she's mm-hmm. never really been allowed or been given the opportunity and people like Theoden and other people are kind of going, you know, you're, that's not your role and, you know, we can't allow you to come to battle and she's always trying to prove her worth mm-hmm. and then eventually mm-hmm. she does it like and it's a, uh, she kills the, the greatest villain that, that that's on the battlefield. So yeah. it's uh, an amazing, yeah, it's just, it's, it's it, like you said as well, in the time that it was written by Tolkien, it's even more, uh impressive when you think back and now like you said he's so it was very forward thinking Mm -hmm. and um yeah i don't know egalitarian there is just like this pride of like oh 
I could do that. You know, there is something about yeah. representation. Like representation is really important. And I'm like, I could kill a witch king. Yeah, like, put me in, coach. Yeah. I, um... Your boss is a representation <laughs> of the witch king. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I could kill my boss. Yeah. <laughs> Stab him in the face. Fine, I can handle this. This is how most psychopaths and like crazy people's brain works. Like, uh. They watch Lord of the Rings. They're like, right, I'm going to stab my boss in the face <laughs> with a knife. Yeah. I love my boss. I'd never. But um, yeah, if there is. <laughs> He's just... Willy Wonka. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. He saved me. Oompa Loompa. Um, but yeah, it's that i think that that like giving her such an important task was uh more of an impact than i realized at the time um when i was just a young pup so mm-hmm. yeah very good very good mm-hmm. like a boss what is your favorite speech in lord of the rings my favorite speech hands down is sam's speech at the end of the two towers um i I just get goosebumps every time. Every time I try and record the speech with my phone so I can just like send it to someone <laughs> and just be like, hey guys, I just saw this. Just, you know, love you, whatever. <laughs> I just yeah. want, I like want everyone to feel what I'm feeling at that moment. It's just the best. I, I took a screenshot of it, but like y'all know, y'all know it's, uh, it's so good. And I just, it, I read somewhere that like last year, you know, that, that was the speech we all needed. <laughs> I'm like, it is the speech we need. We need it every day. But like, oh, yeah. Famously here in Ireland, our prime minister actually quoted that speech during one of his uh, one of his speeches during the first lockdown at the very mm. start. At the beginning. And, uh, yeah. wow. At the very beginning, in one of his like big speeches when he was addressing the nation, he said something like, and when it shines, it'll shine out the clear mm. or something. And loads of people were like, yeah. Isn't that from Lord of the Rings? It wasn't. It wasn't just that line. He he like he. he oh yeah, he, he gave a good bit. I, it was almost. It was almost like a, almost a full speech. Wow. Uh, I don't think he quoted it from Lord of the Rings. I think he just gave that speech, and people who know what's up were like, "We know, we know what you're." <laughs> oh doing yeah, there. no, he he di- he didn't say anything to do with Lord of the Rings, but people started kind of figuring it out, and then after I that, think a couple, I think a couple of days later, he was spotted wearing a mask of Lord of the Rings, and <gasps> yeah, uh, he was. we were like, we we're like, we're proud to have this guy as our prime minister. Yeah, but a funny thing then that just kind of happened after that speech, people were like, "Oh my god." I will lose my mind if he like quotes, I don't know, Beyonce or, or I can't remember. <laughs> People were saying something and then he actually did. He quoted, <laughs> I can't remember what it was. Do you remember, Johnny? I didn't even know about this. Oh, there was another, it was like a running joke between the nation and our prime minister. It was like, will he do it? Will he do it? And then it was almost like a wink to the camera every time. So he, what? He, he he knew like, he knew he was like trending on Twitter or something like, will he, oh, won't yeah. he, oh, he, will, he well. will he, won't he quote, quote Jay-Z. Yeah. <laughs> And, and then, like, you know, then you had some people that were kind of Debbie Downers that were going, like, people are dying and he's quoting Beyonce. Oh my, he's <laughs> out there saying, slap my bitch up. <laughs> <laughs> that's no that's no language for How a prime minister. Dare he. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's hilarious. I didn't know that that happened. That's great. Oh, only oh, in yeah, Ireland. Plenty of videos. Love it. <laughs> but in the end, it's only a passing thing. The shadow. Even darkness must pass. A new day will come. And when the sun shines, it'll shine out the clearer. Those were the stories that stayed with you. That meant something. Even if you were too small to understand why. There's some good in this world, Mr. Furl. And it's worth fighting for. Next one for you, Lauren, is who was your favorite secondary character or minor character? Um, I like this question. Yeah, mm, yeah. You too. guys chose people. I remember um, when I heard the question asked the first time, my brain went to like far more um, important characters than the ones y'all said. Sure. And so I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. I was trying to be on par with what y'all said. Um, so my choice is a little strange, I feel. Maybe not. Mm. Is uh, Rosie Cotton is my favorite minor mm, character. Very, oh, great choice. Mrs. Gamgee. Um, I just, I love that like she had a choice of hobbits and she chose a good man um, or a good hobbit. Um, I love mm-hmm. that she's probably the one dealing with his PTSD, but you know, she loves him anyway. And so she's just patient. Um, and she's got curly hair. So I feel represented. 
And um, <laughs> just, yeah, I I think she is the unsung hero of the Shire. And um, So you are the Rosie Cotton of Dallas. Here's hoping. I'm, fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm still waiting on my Sam to come find me. Are you Are you ready to have 13 children? <laughs> you know, with the right Sam, who knows? I'll just have Baker's dozen. <laughs> but it has to be a Sam. <laughs> yeah, only a Sam. I want that, like, oh, Sam's just so wonderful. He's... He yeah. was honestly my um, other choice for best leader, but it's kind of yeah. hard because he's not a typical leader, but he, I just love Sam. So the woman mm. that like saw Sam for how wonderful he is, I'm just like, she's great. So great. Yeah. She and you. Great choice. She and you. Yeah, she I knew. like that choice. <laughs> I was like, that's she's really a hero. And that is, that, yeah, that's definitely like a minor character since she has such little screen time, but mm. she is but then she is very important at the same time. Mm-hmm. She's, she's very involved, motivated. yeah, and we, yeah, we, we, we hear about her a lot in the movies. So, um, yeah, like I mean, she's probably got a bigger part than um, my choice, anyway. And what was your choice, Dave? I can't remember. I'm trying to remember myself. Was it Oglook? Did, did you, I was going to say, did you go for an orc? Did you go for Oglook? I think you did. I can't remember. Actually, I can't yeah, remember. Mine. I just remember y'all said, and I was like, who? So that's what I knew. It was minor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, w- I went for some just yeah. some like miserable hobbit. I think he may actually have been like Odo Proudfoot. <gasps> yeah, but uh, it but, uh, was, but that was that was your honorable mention. I thought. Oh, maybe I did. Maybe that was my honorable mention. Who was my main choice? I can't even remember who my favorite. Like I, I remember uh, mentioning him, but maybe yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe that was my honorable mention. Um, I can't remember now. I can't remember now. <laughs> I can't got, remember who it was. again. Like we said at the beginning, at the top of the show. Uh, a lot of these car- uh, categories change for me every mm-hmm. every couple of weeks. Yeah. So I'm just like, oh, actually, this is my favorite shot. This is my favorite uh, sh- uh, scene. This is my favorite kill. Actually, my favorite scene never changes. It's always Barmer's death. I have no memory of this place. My next question I put to you is, what is your favorite location in Lord of the Rings? Um, so I my favorite location is... I don't know if I say this right. Uh, Minas Tirith, Minas Tirith. Yes. I say it right. Minas okay. Tirith, yeah. I love that place. I think it's so imposing and amazing. Just, I love it. Mm. But also, mm. my second runner up was Perched on the Shoulder of Treebeard, is my other favorite location. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's where I want to be. That's where I want to live. Yeah. I feel so safe. I know. Build a treehouse. Uh, how <laughs> wonderful would that be? Like, you're slow moving, but you are, you're up there. So. Those... And he's also just reading you poetry until you fall asleep. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and it's like he just cozy up in his leaves. I So that's my really where I want to oh, wow. be. But I like to look at my Tirith. Minas Tirith. That's a great. Yeah. That's yeah, really great good. Location. I like that answer a lot. It's it does look good. so comfy when Mary and Pippin are just sitting there yeah. and kind of dozing off. Yeah. Imagine yeah. if you had a hammock yeah. that you could like between his branches just oh. like. Right. Oh, now we're talking. Yeah. Now we're talking. Heaven. Or even just in his hands. <laughs> Yeah, but, well, like, you know, when he's like, little ox, and he's like squeezing the shit out of them, you're like, oh, oh yeah, not I, that don't, part. I don't want that to happen. But when he's but like I... laying them gently down, yeah, yeah. Like a lovely oh. mossy grass. Yeah, mm. that's lovely. Anyway, the next one and the last one for you, Lauren, is what is your favorite Lord of the Rings beard? <laughs> this question made me laugh. I, uh, so. <laughs> so stupid <laughs> it's so stupid but like i really had to think about it um so my favorite beard is one you don't see and that's the Ooh. uh female Weird. dwarf beard that is alluded to <laughs> uh. in, by aragorn and so i'm like oh it's like the so aragorn's action when he does this yes when he's like to, to our listeners it's yeah it's the beard yeah so that's my favorite beard because it makes me, I literally, I wonder all the time, like, what does a female dwarf look like? And I picture it. So she, that's my favorite beard because it's a mystery to me. Um, but if I'm going off of I, actual beard, uh, Aragorn at the end, so foxy. So. <laughs> oh, wow. Dave, 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 same as was, your answer. Yeah, same as mine. It has to be the inauguration Aragorn as well. Yeah. Like, when he's letting it grow, it's very kingly. Oh, it's got a little yeah. gray in there, a little salt and pepper. Mm. So oh, not, mama. yeah, so not good. Amon Sul Aragorn when he's like killing no. all the ring rates no, and he's all that's dirty and sweaty. Aragorn. I like that yeah. too, but different, you know, different. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't bring that Aragorn a, to on a date. That's that's salty Aragorn <laughs> yeah. when he's when you're like I've Aragorn hasn't home, hasn't washed in a couple of weeks. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> he's ripe. So mm. yeah, the so the lady, the female dwarf beard is my favorite beard because it it mm. leads me to imagine. So 
I think we when get you... a little glimpse of that in the Hobbit movies when Legolas meets Gloin, Gimli's dad, mm. and he <laughs> takes his little like pocket thing off him, and he show he's like Gloin's like, hey, that's private, and Legolas opens it up and he says. What's this? Your brother? And he goes, That's my wife, or whatever. <laughs> and, then, and then there's a little picture of Gimli as well. And he's like, What's this monstrosity or something? And he's like, That's that's me, wee lad, Gimli. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I yeah. Gimli. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so apparently he thought his wife was his brother. So um, <laughs> I can't remember exactly what it looks like, but I think it's just, it just looks like another male. It dwarf. looks like Gimli, really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. So, uh, yeah. when when you were talking about the your favorite beard being like that imaginary beard, I kind of straight away the first image that came into my mind was like all the all the women in Monty Python when they're stoning <laughs> and they're wearing those fake beards. <laughs> are there <laughs> any are there any women here? No, 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 no. <laughs> That's it, yeah, exactly. Oh, so good. Oh, I love that scene. Oh, I also wrote down tree beard as my other favorite beard. So, oh, well, yeah. I was just trying if to. You've f- got beard in your name. Yeah. Like. I was just trying to yeah. fit him into everything because I was like, I love him. He he mm. is my favorite beard. Not his beard specifically, but he is my favorite yeah. beard exactly. in the movie. Mm-hmm. His beard is also his body, like. so. Yeah, it is. He's got a serious body. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, you don't see many dwarf women. And in fact,. They are so alike in voice and appearance <laughs> that they're often mistaken for dwarf men. It's the beards. Those are all my favorites, guys. Great Beautiful. job. Thank you. Love that. Yeah, those were some great answers, Lauren. Thank you. I, I can see you put some thought into them as well. It wasn't. Mm. Uh, I think Dave and I were just like maybe more kind of off the top of our heads. But, uh, and it was our, our first episode, so, you know. <sighs> We yeah. kind of <laughs> didn't have much to say. No, y'all did great. Y'all made me think harder about them. So I would have good phoned it. That in was a what we kind of. That's what that's what we wanted as well from that episode. We wanted people to, and well, like with with a lot of our episodes, we want people to like get in touch and let us know what their opinions are of these situations as well. So mm. that was an easy one where people could just say, "Here's my list." And so uh, we got a lot of yeah. responses on people on social media, and we were delighted to read through them again. So. It's cool to revisit that a little bit with you and hear other people's perspectives and some really good ones that I hadn't even considered, <laughs> which were, like you said, uh, on tree bird's shoulder, uh, the invisible beard. Yeah. Uh, some really good answers in there. Thanks. Um, Great stuff. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. It was fun. So I just want to ask you an- another couple of questions as well. First of all, the overall feel of Lord of the Rings as a trilogy, like, I don't know about you, but these movies make me feel like really nostalgic because obviously I grew up watching these and anytime I kind of I don't know if I put it on on a Christmas I always just think back to how I felt when I was younger and it makes me feel happy inside I actually remember when the Hobbit movies were coming out I was a little bit older but I, I slipped right back into that feeling of when I first watched the Lord of the Rings and I was getting excited for them mm. and I just remember constantly playing the music mm um that like all the howard shore soundtrack over and over again um but i just wanted to ask how how do they make you feel or what what kind of emotion does do they bring out in you um yes i weirdly enough though i did grow up watching them i don't feel nostalgic i feel they're comfort movies for me which is a point of confusion for my roommates because they're like how is this movie comforting it's there's it's war there's chaos there's ugly orcs you know this is you know not comforting but to me there's something about so it's a very like just the the classic tale of good versus evil and good winning i mean there's a lot of trauma that happens from the beginning to good winning but like there's just it's like i know it ends well so I know that every it's it's almost like like you know trudging through this these horrible things is worth it because like there it's oh it, it there's a sacrifice to I don't know it, it's just so it's like I long to have a story like that I think like I long to be yeah. the hero in a story like that and be brave enough to be a Frodo a Sam um selfless enough to be an Aragorn like I long to be that person and so getting to see it played out, it like maybe makes me think I can be. And so there's something very comforting about it, um, even though they're fictional. But, you know, like 
I think it touch it speaks to like the deep part of every person's heart and like desire to be these these like characters, you know. Um, mm. So for me, it's, that's what it's, Lord of the Rings is. It's just uh, it's it is characters, mm-hmm. and I completely agree with what you're saying uh, in the fact that it being a comfort movie. I agree with both of you. I agree with Dave as mm-hmm. well. For me, they are. Uh, I get an incredible feeling of nostalgia as well, but definitely definitely comfort and even as i've spoken before about with the sometimes where i can easily sit at home and put on the the music from the shire in the background and that kind of just comforts me as well and it just makes me feel relaxed and Mm -hmm. it's the same thing with the movies anytime i go back and watch the movies very often dave and i when we when we see each other at christmas we'll very often that's one of the things that we had that is on our agenda we're like okay what day are we watching lord of the rings Mm -hmm. and it's like you put it on and you just feel like that kind of just you're falling back into that time but also it's just this feeling of comfort so yeah and like you've said as well with characters i think um there's such a big mix of different types of characters and because it's fantasy you get characters that are like i don't know so uh i don't know they're so different in their like i mean you it's not just characters of uh, different people you get the character of an elf so it's the perspective of this person who's been alive for thousands of years mm-hmm. and so it's even just this kind of different kind of character that you don't get to see in your day-to-day lives very often either. So I don't know. It's just like we said, the Lord of the Rings is about the characters mm-hmm. and they are the people who create the story. And yeah, that's yeah. something that is just amazing. That's like that builds the story. And as you said, you know, it ends well. So there are some moments of difficulty, but of course, what is a good story if it doesn't have moments of difficulty either? So right. Heroes don't get to be heroes without, um, fighting you know getting like dealing with the the ugly like you have to go through that to be a hero otherwise you're just i don't know just a person (laughs) you're just a zero Uh, yeah yeah (laughs) yeah yeah. (laughs) so yeah i i get a lot of grief it's so funny because i told my roommates i was doing this and so i've lived with my roommates for like five years now so they've been through multiple iterations of a lord of the rings marathon i mean we're talking multiple times a year i'm just like it's time guys they're like not again (laughs) um and so they're just like why lauren why especially during covid you know it was like every other day i'm like and the two towers is back on (laughs) um and they just like we had a deep discussion about why it's comforting to me and it's just funny to me because i'm like but isn't it to everyone and they're like no (laughs) it's not yeah but I, I would agree. I, I would have to say that your roommates are the weird ones. I'm like, <laughs> of, I'm like, yeah, of course it's comforting to Yeah, it boggles my mind as well when people are like, oh, that movie, I think I saw like 10 minutes of its crap. And I'm like, sure. I know. I'm like, what? <laughs> what What were you on? Yeah, I, yeah. before, you know, it's funny, before Lord of the Rings, my comfort movies, like similar were the Star Wars trilogy, the original. And like, same with you guys, like my brother and I would like marathon it every summer. We would pick a day and we'd like, block out all light and be like star wars and um but now this i mean lord of the rings is i mean hot take so much better than star wars and like i there's just so much more emotional depth and so i definitely have replaced star wars with lord of the rings so (laughs) you will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy so one thing i want to ask you lauren about lord of the rings well maybe this is like a couple of questions rolled into one but do you think Lord of the Rings mostly appeals to men or women? And did you think Tolkien had too few women in Lord of the Rings to begin with altogether? Ooh, what would be your female perspective on that's this? That's a great question. Um, it's hard to say because I think it, I would definitely say it appeals, appeals more to men because there is that like um, hero call in all men. But I think it maybe appeals to a certain personality type more than anything else. Like, um, whereas I feel that same desire um, as a woman, I think I think everyone has that desire to be great. But I think for the longest time, having it portrayed as like a conquering hero, it was purely a masculine character, you know. So but I think the desire to be great is something universal and uh, Lord of the Rings portrays that in so many different characters and we we do get a taste a female taste of greatness with Eowyn which is you know without that I would it'd be hard to um 
yeah. to feel like I belong there. You know, like it would be hard to see myself as the other characters. I think like, but, but I see myself, I think because like Eowyn opens the door and, and Arwen, you know, like shout out to Arwen. She's fine. But like. And and Galadriel. Galadriel, but she's weird. I, I, <laughs> I wrote down. <laughs> she's, she, but she is like powerful. She right? is. Yeah. She's like. But yeah, she is kind of weird. Yeah, especially at the, when we first meet her, mm-hmm. we're like, "What's this girl's deal?" Yeah, <laughs> you know? she she's not relatable. I would say she's so like yeah. on a no, pedestal. No, I agree with that. Um, but, but she is. You're like awesome. Like she's seen. Like she is powerful. She is. She is her own quirky self, and like she is owning it, which is great. You know. Yeah. But I do think it definitely appeals more to men because I think, honestly, I think men are more comfortable admitting they want to be a hero and so it's very natural for a man to like indulge in these stories whereas women we don't necessarily feel like it's our place to be a hero and so we those of us that do want to and like are openly like i want to be the hero you know like it's not as marketed to us because we're not like naturally as inclined to admit that to the world you know um that's how i feel at least so and as far as the number of women, uh, I made a list of the women, and I could <laughs> have her. forgotten some. Okay, so there's Arwen, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Eowyn, the mm-hmm. screaming woman at Helm's Deep, uh, <laughs> the mother who sends her kids off on the horse. Morwen. Gal- Is that her name, Morwen? I think so, yeah. Uh, Galadriel. What? Is it? I don't know. If she- I didn't know if she had a name. Morwen is the mother of uh, Turin. Not from Lord of the Rings, from oh. uh, the Children of Hurin. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, but I don't know what that that woman's name is. I think it's Morrowind. It's when she the like oh, the I town know. is getting like the orcs are running after the town and she like sends her kids yeah. off. Yeah. Um, and then Rosie Cotton and those are like the only women that I can like. I haven't watched the movies in like a month or two, but the only women I can think of, <laughs> other than like you know the little Hobbit girls. Um, what about? We, what about Lobelia Sackville Baggins? Oh yes, oh. other than yeah. the Hobbins, oh, yeah. uh, the Hobbit women. I forgot about like the the, Hobbins. the little um, grubby fingered Sackville Bagginses. Um, <laughs> hmm. So yeah, there's really not many. I mean, there's very few. I mean, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plus you know the one you just mentioned, which seems insane. Like for such an epic tale, there being so few women. Mm-hmm. I mean. It's crazy. Speak sp- speaking roles for sure. Right. I mean, yeah, we see a lot of them in the background. For example, elven women when they're like just walking through the forest and mm-hmm. stuff. We see Elrond's wife is sitting beside him at the council of Elrond, but again, she doesn't speak. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, in terms of actual speaking roles, yeah, um, very few. Um, we don't. Do, Rosie Cotton doesn't even. She doesn't like, speak. R- she she speaks in the background. She says like you know good night yeah. lads and stuff like that. Yeah. When she's like when night lads. Like, oh yeah. I leave in the bar. You're right. But that's about it. Like she doesn't actually it's have true, a conversation actually. with anyone. Mm. You know. And you know, weirdly enough, it doesn't it doesn't bother me. It does. I mean, I think I prefer. Well, I think what you said with the fact that how then uh, Eowyn gets such a big win that kind of definitely makes it brings it up a little bit and if that wasn't a part of the story it would definitely possibly be, be more, more of an issue and yes. be more of a wow tolkien really like left out women out completely yeah the story so and eowyn has a line that um it's in the it's in the movie but uh, it's also in the, i read the books maybe like four or five years ago and unfortunately the movies are still like the only things I can really remember. I don't remember the book, but um, don't worry, that happens. I know it's just visually it's too overpowering. Um, but there's a quote in the it's in the Two Towers. It's when you know Aragorn's talking to Eowyn, and oh, I'm sorry, it's in um, the Return of the King book, but it's in the Two Towers movie, I believe. Cool. And you know he says, "What do you fear, lady?" He asked, and she says, "A cage." To stay behind bars until use and old age accept them, and all chance of doing great deeds is gone beyond recall or desire. And I just, as a you know woman reading that in the 21st century, it was it spoke so deeply to me, and so it's very interesting that he could have written that so long ago, and just kind of given a voice to something that is, it's hard to put into words in general, even now, but yeah, 
So I just remember feeling like really, I, like J.R.R. Tolkien, he, under, he understood women. You know, like it's not that he didn't, at least in that moment, I could feel understood. And so mm. it's not that he chose to leave women out. It's that this tale was, it was a different tale. You know, it's a tale of um, brotherhood. And, you know, after you learn about his World War One experience and, it just makes sense. Like it makes sense that um, it was it was a tale of it was just different. It's not that we yeah. were left out. Hmm. Well, Lauren, you are a shield maiden of Rohan, so <laughs> Thank you. I do not believe that will be your fate. Thank you. <laughs> well, t- Tolkien, like he grew up surrounded by males, and his environment was predominantly male. Um, so, and I think but he his, had his, a mother, very his co- mother had a huge experience uh, or a huge impact yeah, on huge, his life as well. And but she still died language. when he was young. She did die when he was young. Yeah. You know, he was very religious. He would have had a conservative view of women. But um, yeah, I think people do confuse that with sexism, mm. but it's far from it. Um, like naturally, a story of camaraderie between friends rather than a love story would be what he would have went for, or a story that had loads of women in it and mm. yeah now if that if the, maybe if the book was written nowadays people would be you know blasting it and being like why isn't there women in there but like again like that. as you said his 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 relationships growing up as well like and he had his uh his little club of friends and it was the mm. four his four uh, him and his three friends and they were you know three male friends and they were always together so mm. He probably like obviously he speaks about he doesn't like allegory, but he definitely draws some inspiration from somewhere. So mm-hmm. yeah, um, yeah, maybe it would have been more difficult for him to to write more female characters because of his lack of um, female companions. Yeah. I suppose I would rather mm. have one really good female representation yeah. than a bunch of like really poorly executed female representatives. Like yeah. that's yeah. why like Eowyn, I'm like hey. I get it. I get her. That's like, I feel more seen by her. Wait, not by her. I feel more seen or more represented by her than I do um, by so many other like main characters of other stories. Like if you want to bring in other, yeah. like, like Twilight, mm. for example, like <laughs> there's no way I am not that girl, you know, like, and most girls aren't. And so it's kind of like, I would rather have this minor character who gets to be a hero and she's authentically her um and fights for her authentic self because like she doesn't give up you know she doesn't just like roll over okay i'll stay home you know like she's like i'm gonna put myself in disguise and we're going you know like she's yeah i would rather have her than all the representation of like some like really poorly Mm. like misunderstood female you know what's what's also that's really yeah i completely agree with that and i think it's like I love how in the movie she's this character who's like, as I said before, she gets overlooked a lot for certain things. Like when she wants to, uh, she wants to fight at Helm's Deep. She wants to stay and fight against the wargs, and she's she keeps she she keeps on getting sort of pushed aside. And then when Mary gets sort of pushed aside, uh, when he wants to go and fight uh, at the Battle of Pelennor Fields, that she is the one that steps in and takes him and helps mm-hmm. him get there and fight for the people that he loves because she knows how he feels in that situation mm-hmm. and it's it's really cool their her relationship with mary in that scene mm. as well yeah she has an yeah. empathy that um you know she can only have because she has been like pushed mm. aside just and like that mary. and that theoden and, and uh and her brother couldn't understand mm-hmm. yep and i'm sorry dave go ahead <laughs> I think I think when we were talking about which which does it appeal more to as well, uh, guys or girls, I'd say now just talking from a movie standpoint, because the movie is so male dominant and that especially that there's not young girls in it. I think that's like a massive factor to to why men would like it more or, or guys, uh, even younger guys, just because there's more to relate to. Mm-hmm. Like I would. I would think that Lord of the Rings would have been what a lot of guys would watch when they were younger, but then girls would have watched something like Harry Potter mm-hmm. or something, which had much, I'm pretty sure that's got a much more female demographic fan base. Um, but they have plenty of fleshed out women characters in it, like um, Hermione mm-hmm. and Ginny Weasley, and Dolores and um, what's your one's name? Miss McGonagall? Professor. Professor Miss, McGonagall. Yeah, Professor McGonagall and <laughs> Professor Tr- Trelawney. You lost me after Hermione. <laughs> <laughs> and then like Hermione and Ginny would be like 
younger as well so like loads of young girls would have related to yeah. that whereas you know they don't have that for Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. obviously then for the Hobbit movies Peter Jackson added in Tauriel and that was probably for reasons you know to get like women mm-hmm. in to watch the, the Hobbit movies I'd say that was pure marketing yeah. reasons only but um, which it feels hey, like lo- it lo- lo- loads of people hate Tauriel but I, I kind of like I her. like um, I liked her I just didn't like those movies I think um, it felt like you were just like someone was like give me your money give me your money you know like and I'm like this should have yeah, been yeah. at only two movies personally but um Max. yeah i i i feel bad not mentioning arwen because she is cool mm. but it's hard because once you read the books she has very little role you know like she yeah, doesn't do that true. epic you know run with the horse like she doesn't do any of that so it's hard to see her mm. as like she's more of the pedestal figure for as a woman like the um like arwen's arwen is like kind of like the Galadriel also you know she's like almost untouchable she's too perfect yeah. however she does make an incredibly difficult decision in that of giving up her life as an elf mm-hmm. to stay with Aragorn and stay behind in Middle Earth and she has to break her traditions and she has to uh, go away from what her father wants her to do and so I think maybe in that difficult decision that she makes maybe we get one well, we get to see a certain side of her and that's maybe that some people could relate to that decision as well mm-hmm. and kind of going against her father, which maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know, like going against maybe the, the patriarch. Mm-hmm. That's a big decision as well. And so that's definitely her biggest thing because as you just said, in the movies, she gets this cool role of saving Frodo and all that, whereas mm. um, obviously Glorfindel is the one who does that in the books. Yeah, I, maybe maybe there's a it's a personal thing where I feel like I don't relate to her. You know, like um, she's not quite like it's just Liv Tyler that you don't like. <laughs> That's it. I hate her. No, I uh, yeah, yeah. I just she's almost um, this kind of like Madonna figure oh, in a way, like um, <laughs> just kind of you know does no wrong. And I never relate to characters that do no wrong, um, other than yeah. I don't relate to Aragorn, but I you know. I like it. So. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe maybe Eowyn, Eowyn doesn't really do wrong, but she's not, it's not like everything she touches turns to gold. Like she wants, she like she tries to have a relationship with Aragorn and that just doesn't work out for her. Mm-hmm. And like, so it's not like everything she does has this glory. She's to settle for Faramir. <laughs> I mean. Faramir is, you know, no bad choice yeah, either. Yeah, he's no know, scraps. Uh, <laughs> he's second favorite to everyone. His brother, Aragorn. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. He's no one's first choice. <laughs> Denethor hates him. <laughs> yeah, oh, Denethor, I forgot about that guy. Yeah, I think, yeah, you're right. She, she's, she, you see her struggle. Like, you see her... Yeah, she has struggles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so does Arwen, you know, and I kind—I do write Arwen off, but um, uh, she she struggles, and so she seems more real to me. Um, but anyway, I can go on forever about her. Yeah. But I do think, but, weirdly, I'm like, why aren't more women into these movies? Maybe they're, they are, but like... It's just a bunch of attractive men running around all day. Like, it's great. You know, it's like watching 300. It's like, that movie's for the women. Like, it's not. <laughs> Do not trouble me with Faramir. I know his uses and they are few. I, well, I was, sorry, I was just going to say, I don't think I completely agree that it's complete. I, I mean, I, I don't know too many women that are friends of mine that are, well, as obsessed as, with Lord of the Rings as I am. But then again, I don't know that many men that are at the, that are into it as much as I am either. So, but like from what I see online and on Twitter, there's, I definitely think that there's a huge representation of women that really love Lord of the Rings and maybe even more so the books than the movies. And mm. in, in terms of mm. uh, book fans of Lord of the Rings, I think a lot of women are uh, definitely fans of um, Tolkien in, in that regard. But Oh, I definitely, yeah. And, and yeah. yeah, you're probably right with the books, especially, but that could all boil down to, like, we, we, we don't know the, the stats in who reads more no books, ma- males or females, like, but I don't know. Mm. But I, I do think the movies themselves will be more predominantly men. Possibly, our yeah. M- male fan base. Yeah. Maybe, like, openly mm. fans, I feel like, yeah. Mm. You've got some yeah. closet fans closet. there. there. <laughs> <laughs> I like it, but I'm not going to tell anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, henceforth I will call nothing fair unless it be her gift to me. What was her gift? I asked her for one hair from her golden head. 
can give me three. So I think that naturally comes into this next question where, well, I know the answer is probably going to be yes, but would you recommend these movies to your female friends and why? Mm. Um, yes, I would. Specifically now <laughs> to someone who has never even thought to watch Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Uh, like, how would you convince them otherwise? To those, I think they are just nerdy boy movies mm. and, you know, with wars and yeah. orcs and whatnot. Um, that's a good question. I... I, trust me, this has been um, like a vendetta of mine for years is to get my female friends as into it as I am. Um, I would, I think, honestly, I have an easier time getting people to watch it who um, just naturally are more inclined towards fantasy, obviously. people. Some people hate mm-hmm. sci-fi. They hate fantasy. They hate anything that's not based in like, like here. Um, and now, and I don't get that, but, um, I think honest, <sighs> everyone's very set in their ways. It's very hard to get people to do anything, but I think that, yeah. um, <laughs> I think I, I just touch on the, like, we, we've been trying to get you on this podcast for months. <laughs> no, I'm like, fine. Okay. Um, fine. <laughs> I'll be there. Um, I think just like the nature of good versus evil is, is very alluring. And like, there are very few, um, tale i think that like the brotherhood that's represented is is just beautiful and i get um i have people that have siblings have an easier time being convinced to watch this movie i think like Mm. um i have a a friend who has you know like three three or four brothers i can't remember and the moment i was like it's about like these they're going through hardship and they're like a band of brothers together and she's like okay i'll watch it you know like people who (laughs) who have a fondness for those kind of like um buddy adventure stories uh Mm -hmm. yeah yeah, but i think by now if people aren't into it they're never gonna be it's been around for 20 years so it's kind of like yeah if they haven't drunk the kool-aid yet they're not going to but 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 if somebody likes that kind of thing or if somebody's a movie goer or a cinephile they've definitely already seen lord of the rings so it's just the kind of average you know every average movie goer you know that you're trying to convince over they're not going to care about any of that stuff they're like Mm. well is vince vaughn in it or do you know like I don't know, is it scary? Like, I think, how do you convince those people? I, so I read something somewhere. This might... Anyway. Um, this is going to sound horrible, <laughs> but I'm going to say it. That uh, the more intelligent people in this world are the ones that read fiction. And so... I've heard I, that. I think it's something like maybe those people are just dumb and like we just have to (laughs) (laughs) we just have to accept them for who they are they're just ding dongs and they don't get it so we are and look everybody everybody that's going to be listening to this podcast are all are already fans of i know i think we're safe (laughs) just don't tell just uh, listeners don't tell your non lord of the Rings friends about what lauren just said exactly they're gonna they're gonna go they will turn on you (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> with their lower intelligence and you will anyway um. <laughs> some people are dumb you don't like Lord of the Rings you are a big dummy you're one of those dumbs dumb dumbs you're one of those dumb 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 dumbs you know those dumb people um, that's you I don't I, I, I don't have that good of a vocabulary to say but you know they're dumb dumb dumbs <laughs> dumb dumb one gum gum for his tum tum <laughs> you know Lloyd Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! (laughs) Before we finish, I just wanted to ask you, Lauren, who is, in your opinion, the most underrated character in Lord of the Rings? Underrated? Hmm. I do have an answer. Well, it's hard to say because everyone's opinions are so varied. But I would say... I don't, when I first watched it, I would say Sam was the most underrated character. That his part is probably the most crucial. Um, And without him, like, nothing would have happened. Um, Or the ring would have been stopped long before. Um, Mm. But I think that the tide has turned on the opinion of Sam in the last, like, 15 years. Like, now people absolutely love Sam. I think when it first came out, he was kind of like, like the dopey hobbit you know like but now Mm. most most people that are just like sam's the best i love sam so that would have been my answer a while ago now i think he's appreciated but the most underrated um 
up now would maybe be he doesn't get as much screen time. So I think, but in the books, he's he's more um, crucial as, as Faramir. Like, kind of like what you were joking about earlier, like, you know, he's second choice all the time. He's, um, he showed such, like, character when he had Frodo and Sam and he had the ring. You know, like, he, he had the opportunity to take the ring and he did it. And he also, you know, like, willingly... He's got daddy issues, but like willingly, like, you know, put himself on the line to do what he thought he was supposed to do. He, he's just like, his character is so strong. He's clearly the younger brother of uh, Boromir because he's got like all Boromir's good qualities, but he's also learned from Boromir. So he's like, sometimes being the younger sibling pays off. Like, right, Dave? You know? Um, and Johnny, mm-hmm. you're both younger. But um, you get to learn. <laughs> younger than what? Younger. <laughs> Stone age? <laughs> you you can tell he's like (laughs) learned from um you know he got to see when he learned that his brother tried to take the ring you could see this change in him like oh no he did like i he got to basically learn from his brother's experiment experience and not make the same mistake um Hmm. so anyway i just i think he's he deserves more credit than he gets um for his Hmm. character with faramir you can definitely see his qualities in the movies as well but i think in the books he's so mm. much more mm-hmm. of a stronger Fair character about. than he gets credit for in the movies i think maybe that was just a, just a decision that peter jackson went for to give him this kind of bigger moments of doubt and however he is in the in the books he is just an, a, a, like a, such a fantastic character and he really stands out as being this really mm. wise and knowledgeable person in the books and he has these long mm. drawn out conversations with Frodo in the books and again they're really um, we've spoken about this before Dave as well on the podcast how yeah we talked mm-hmm. about it in uh, Tolkien versus Jackson uh, the two towers one I remember that he's much more wisdomous <laughs> in the book he is <laughs> he is smart, smart he's boy. smart what lies or threats led him on this long march from home he would not rather have stayed there Peace. Are you excited for the Amazon Prime Lord of the Rings TV show that's coming? I didn't know about it. Oh, what? There is a what? No. You haven't heard? I didn't know. No. Uh-uh. What? Oh. You haven't heard? Yeah, it's going to be a big a big prequel TV oh, wow. series coming out. It's it's like the most expensive expensive uh, it's by produced. far the most expensive TV show to ever be made. <gasps> yeah, yeah, they over a billion. Yeah. There hasn't been any like um, marketing or trailers or anything like that yet, but I think they're pretty much finished filming season one. It's going to be, they've already like paid for five seasons. (laughs) Yeah. So expect this like maybe March of next year. Oh my God. Okay. So I'm very excited. Did not know about it. I I, I heard the episode y'all talked about the animated movie coming out, Um, but Mm. this, and I heard y'all allude to Mm. something Amazon Prime, but I'm not going to lie. I didn't know Uh, what you were saying. (laughs) It's all making it's sense. All making sense. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> no, I'm very excited. Okay, I'm going to have to do some more research on this after I get off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's going to be based in the Second Age. And so it'll be, you know, quite a long time prior to the, the Lord of the Rings uh, story. But basically, we're imagining we're going to see... Sauron. A mm-hmm. few characters. Maybe Sauron is going to be one of the main... Yeah, I see. Main, Galadriel. main, main baddies at the time. I, well, they're pretty much confirmed. Like, I, there's an actress. I can't remember what her name is, but there's going to be a young Galadriel. Morfid, mm. Morfid Clark is her Morfid name. Morfid Clark. And she's... Hmm. Yeah. She related to you guys? Yeah. <laughs> she... <laughs> she's very uh, young. Yeah. She's our mom. <laughs> Sauron's my dad. <laughs> so, Lauren, before we go, um, where can we find you on social media? Oh, you can only find me on Instagram because that's the only thing I do. Um, and my handle is at Nidaroni. That's N E A T E R O N I. Sounds delicious. <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> Thank you very much. The end has come. Right. Well, this has been really fun. <laughs> <laughs> it has been fun. This has been great. So, thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate you coming on and educating us and the audience if anyone's listening out there which i'm sure there are uh one or two at least and we'll definitely have to have you back on again and we hope yeah, yeah. i'd love it especially 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. gonna say after the Amazon Prime thing comes out because I'm now like kind of fascinated by that. <laughs> yeah, well, get researching. I that. will. But um, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening as well. We really appreciate it. And if you want to get in touch with us, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And until we meet again, my Gavanen. Goodbye. My Gavanen. My Gavanen. <laughs> Hi. I'm trying to remember. That means well met, doesn't it? Um, does that work for a goodbye? Totally. Who knows? Who knows? Totally. I think it'll be fine. Adios. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Yeah. Until we meet again, hello. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it kind of is like. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, guys that's all from us on this week's episode of the council of elrond thank you so so much as usual we really appreciate you taking the time to fit us into your busy week i'm constantly amazed by looking at the listening numbers and how our little podcast is growing week by week and it's all thanks to you so remember to share tell your friends give us a rating and let's keep this train going if you want to send us a message we're on facebook instagram and twitter so check out the links in the podcast info section You can also become a supporter or send an easy one-time donation to our Buy Me A Coffee account, which is buymeacoffee.com forward slash the melon heads. Remember guys, that's melon with two L's. We will see you next week. So goodbye.